little bit of an experiment. Um, so I want to see if I can preserve uh, some fruit cordial that I'm making uh, in uh, in a in a in a bottle um, with a, with a cap on without putting it in a jar and having like a proper jar lid on it. Um, and if I can keep it in the cupboard rather than having to keep the fruit cordials that I make in the um, I keep them in the fridge. So I, more like it, can I extend the shelf, the shelf life type of thing? So uh, normal cordial recipe, uh, I normally add less sugar. So it's about oh, it's about 1.2 liters of blueberry juice, which I've reduced down to about 450 grams. Uh, we've got the juice of uh, two lemons, but they were kind of small, so there's three lemons juice worth in there. So we need to add the lemon juice to that because you just need a bit of acidity and there's about 200 grams worth of sugar so we need to melt that sugar turn the heat up it won't take much to melt it so just want to sweeten up the juice as well better taste it might need a little bit more sugar And then I've got some jars, well, some bottles sterilizing in the oven. So they're nice and clean. So it'll just kill any bacteria that's in the bottles. It's nice, isn't it? Why am I surprised? Why am I surprised that's nice? Strange sometimes. I might need a little bit more sugar though. I think I need a bit more sugar. I think I need a bit more sugar what we've got. Obviously it kind of depends on the acidity of the uh, lemons and the kind of the concentrated flavour of the blueberries, you know. Uh, not, blueberries aren't uniform, you know, they, they, they vary in taste per blueberry. Some blueberries are particularly nice, some blueberries are alright, but they're just not as intense uh, hopefully by reducing the juice down you kind of intensify the flavor and make it a little bit more uniform but that's not to say that it's always going to be the same so set recipes are kind of nice but sometimes we just need to slightly improvise so bring that up to the boil and then it kind of definitely kills any kind of bacteria that's in there and then if it's boiling, if we put it into the uh, measuring jug, it will certainly kill any bacteria in the measuring jug. What do we want to use? I think that one. That one. That one's been in the fridge for a few days. So, as soon as it comes back up to the boil, that's shiny. Nice colour. I'm not presenting my cloth. So, no, I can turn the oven off now. Oven off. That's boiling. So, just, ooh, I just need to let those cool slightly. I don't want them cracking. Need another cloth, just in case. And I'll just pour it over here. Hopefully, I've got, I'd quite like to have some for myself as well. So, if we've only got 500 mils. Oh, we've got 500 mils. Oh, that's good. We've got 600 mils, so there's a little bit left over for me as well. So we'll use pour just in slightly. I don't know if it will. It shouldn't crack because it was in the oven for about 100 degrees, and we boiled this, which is 100, 100 degrees. So you can't put hot liquids in a cold glass container, and you can't put cold liquids in a hot glass container because the different temperature will make the glass crack but we're both at 100 degrees so that's fine to use that the last thing we want is to crack the container and waste the cordial and make a mess because I'm fed up of making a mess of having to clear up and I'm fed up of washing up as well so and I've just sterilized the caps in some boiling water as well. Well, it's not boiling anymore because I've just uh, it's just cooled down a little bit. But it was boiling when I put them in. So cap on. It has got in these caps. They have got like a proper seal. 
in the bottom. So as long as it's sealed and it's airtight, the residual heat in the glass and the uh, juice will kind of make it sterilise inside. Hopefully. Hopefully. And then we'll be able to see what happens. Ah, actually, I've got some of those. Although, it probably would have worked in um, those, like, kilner jar. I'll get one out. I'll show you what I mean. So, that's the one I'm going to have for myself. Because it's nice just to have a bit of homemade cord in my house. But, uh, oh, I need that. So, some fancy gin came in that. And it's got one of those tops. So, I could have made it and put it in there. So, and that certainly would have. So, you kind of make it and you can put, I made some ginger beer in one of these. So you put it in there and you seal the top like that. And as long as everything's hot and sterile, when you put it in, uh, it should preserve things. But, uh, so I could have done that and it probably, it definitely would have worked in something like that. I'm 99% sure it would have worked in something like that. Put that away. Um, but I just wanted to see if it would actually work in a old, or older bottle like that so that's some fancy tonic came in that bottle so hopefully that will work and I'll be able to keep that one in the cupboard for a month and we'll see what happens and if it starts to ferment we'll know because it'll explode in the cupboard and make a mess or uh, we'll get some little um, not bacterial growth um, but a little bit of yeast growth uh, so we we'll get some white spots on the top now uh, we'll be able to tell I didn't have a small bottle, otherwise I would have used a small bottle. But I kind of, you know, if I ever fancied making uh, homemade cordials, well, not homemade cordials because I have to do it in a proper kitchen, but if I was ever just kind of like make my own cordials and sell them, uh, is this something I could use rather than having to uh, buy those like Kilner, like the, the thing that I've just kind of shown you. But anyway, so just a quick experiment, and the results will be uh, in a month.